Well, and just like that, the action continues from TCO Stadium here in Egan, Minnesota, and we are all set for the next matchup between the Golden Street Retrievers and the Northern Loonies. Pleasure to have you along for this one. Hi, everybody. Nick Gismondi alongside Abby Gustitis and our good friend Wendy Young is down pitch side as we get you all set for this next matchup. Obviously, Rugby Sevens is fast and furious. The first initial lead is so important. Want to put a button on that last matchup. That'll be it. We won't see any more uh, from the loggerheads. Experts move on. We'll see them later. Uh, but your final thoughts on that match. The experts were the well-tuned machine in that last one. They had it together. They were well-balanced across the board, and they built on their momentum and got the job done. So look forward to seeing them in that championship match. Taking a look at the lineups here, the Loonies, obviously the huge signing splash over the summer was Dan Norton, the World 7's all-time leading scorer. Dan Norton, we haven't seen him on the seventh circuit in quite some time, but the two-time Olympian, he is all gas, no brakes, and excited to see him out here. And on the retriever side, we got to talk about the Samoan star, Paul Scanlon. Paul Scanlon, he is a dream teamer on the circuit, and he is making a splash here in Minnesota, debuting for the Golden State Retrievers. Yeah, he won the impact player of uh, LA Sevens, and just uh, obviously his accomplishments, fantastic. And a good crowd, by the way, here at TCO Stadium. They braved the rain and stuck with us and came out. And underway here at TCO. Pleasure to have you along, and right away the pressure. Well, here you go. There's the pace, and and, and right away it's this uh, it's this retrievers team that we see on the jump. Retrievers doing well, holding on to that ball. A little bit of interchange, but you see the physicality out there. And then the retrievers pinged there for losing their feet. So ball back to the loonies, but they're in their try zone and have almost 100 meters to go. Loonies under pressure and a very physical start to this one. And as we just get underway, let's head down to Wendy Young with a report after she spoke to both coaches. Wendy? Yes, I talked to the Loonies, and they wanted to build up throughout the week, and they're building here. And we see with the Retrievers. Well, that's Scanlon. He moves it across to Noble. Noble trying, and it just fumbles out of the hands. Wendy, keep her going. Yeah, the Retrievers really wanted to have that chemistry. They've got their little dog on the sideline. They're the new kids on the block, but they want to make sure that they are going from the start, and that's what we're seeing here. And there is an adorable little stuffed animal Golden Retriever. Very cute and all windy. I was kind of hoping that it was an actual puppy Golden Retriever. Unfortunately, just the stuffed animal, but the action on the pitch. A few errors seen early on. So ball goes back to the loonies after that knock on scene from Noble. Again, just five meters out from the try zone. So we'll look to see a lot of pressure here from the Golden Retrievers. Good look at Tyanosa as well. Longtime USA Eagle. And it's the loonies trying to find a little bit of pace here, but gosh, the passes are just into the fingertips a little. and. Tupuola couldn't really hold on to that. Now, we should mention that it is drizzling a little bit here, so you're going to see some slick conditions pick up a smidge. That could be a factor, but there's also that chemistry that we talked about early on, just sort of meeting everybody, trying to figure out your teammates, etc. So the offloads coming into play here with the weather, with not knowing your teammates as well. However, you're running those support lines. You're hearing your teammates calling for the ball. So a lot of offloads seen early on, but a lot of errors as well. And this time, the loonies were actually penalized because it was a knock on and then touching the ball on that offsides position. And golden retrievers elect for the scrum. This slows the game down a little bit, but it's an opportunity to perform a set move, which given the short amount of time that these teams have spent together is usually a good option. 4.30 in the first, Retrievers with it, well moved, and it is Scanlon to the outside, tried to put it into the hands of Tyanosa, and just couldn't hold on. Couldn't hold on, but Looney's deemed offside, so it's a quick tap for the Retrievers as they go route one and another offload that doesn't go to hand. Looney's back in possession. Tupuola with it. Now it will come out to the hands of Nui Tupuivaha. 
almost went a chip ahead was Dan Norton. He'll move it over to Viafale. Vess will come back down, and the Loonies doing very well now to start to move the ball. They're holding on well. Scanlon with it. Loonies hold on to that ball like you mentioned, but some physicality coming in from the Retrievers. Dan Norton, ball in hand, but takes a big hit from Tyanosa. I think you've been on the receiving end of that a time or two. I have been on the receiving end of a Tyanosa hit, and let, let, let me let you know that it resulted in a few broken ribs, and this one right here is uh, proof in the pudding does look like it's creeping up. You see Dan Norton speaking to the referee, saying, hey, watch the high shot. All of the contact must remain below the shoulders just for safety of the players out there. Dan Norton, smile on his face. Oh, I've seen that smile from Ty Nosa too, after a big hit. I was on my back trying to catch my breath, and he was standing over me laughing. So yeah, a very familiar situation. 2.54 to go in the first. Scoreless in this one so far, but that's all right. That will change, I promise. Scrum nearby. Wendy, what do you got? Talking about that tackle, you know, it is right at that shoulder line. Seeing what Dan saw on the replay, that head flying back, that's what they're looking for. But down here, the conversation is that that was a great hit. <laughs> I saw the smiles, and I imagine I felt it all the way up here. I can't imagine what it looked like and felt like down there. It was intense. All right, Wendy doing a great job pitch side for us. Rain picking up a little bit. That's a great look at Dan Norton with some space. There's a big one-arm pitch and into the hands of Tupuola. Demonte Noble did well to corral Dan Norton on the edge there. But Looney's maintaining ball. Have a look there. Dan Norton ever so well puts boot to ball yet retrievers maintain yet are they in their own try zone looney's looking to apply the pressure getting that five meter scrum i'll be doing my best to avoid the retrievers retrieve ditch line it's just too easy of a tap in and we won't say that again i promise <laughs> all right wendy what do you got Taking that ball back into their own end goal. That's why the Retrievers will not get this ball back now. Looney's with a great opportunity with their own five-meter scrum. 1.30 to go. We are scoreless in the first half of our second match. A good one earlier if you're just tuning in. Loggerheads lose early to the experts. And now we'll see what comes of this five-meter scrum, Abs. So still no points on the board. Five meters away from the try zone. That is a difficult position for the Retrievers to defend. They got about 15 meters of this short side to work with. Yet you have Dan Norton and Dion Crowder lurking at the open side. Nice job by the Loonies. Quickly into the hands of Tupuola. And he will find his way across. And the downward pressure puts them on the board first for five with 45 to go in the first. I love this option from the Loonies. They know they have that space on the short side. Tupuola at scrum half here, but Dan Norton does so well. He maintains his width. He gets the retrievers to have a look at him, slide out, opening up that gap. And then Marcus Tupuola, we've seen that jump step from him on the circuit plenty of times. He's been capped on the U.S. side. That conversion will also count, so that puts the Loonies up seven in the waning seconds here, at least of the clock that's remaining. But we'll see what happens as again, let's remind you that just because you're going to hear that horn doesn't mean it's over just yet. So we'll see if they can get this off quickly. Retrievers will want to regain this possession and get down the pitch, looking for an equalizer before halftime. Up in the air, knocked down. Retrievers hold on to it. That was Channel. He tries to work it to the far side, tackled down. Ball will come loose, and they'll work it along the left side of the pitch now. A big hit up high. Wendy right at her uh, run down there, and they'll hustle to grab the ball and try to pull it out. A little bit of an entanglement with camera. That will finish off the half. We'll make sure Wendy's okay, and when we come back, we'll take a look at what happened in that first half. But it's the Loonies with the 7-0 lead, and it's this hit by Tyanosa on Dan Norton that's got everybody buzzing, and Norton shaking a little bit. Back after this. It would have just been chaos. Oh, 
It's Marcus Tupuola who got things kicking off for the Loonies. That is a seven to nothing advantage right now. Gotta love the costumes and make sure you keep up to date on all premier rugby sevens. Visit pr7s.com. All right, back underway. Nick Gismondi alongside Abby Gostitis and Wendy Young is down pitch side here at TCO Stadium in Egan, Minnesota. Our second match of premier sevens. Pleasure to have you along for this one. Just underway here and the pace in that first half, very good. The pace in this second half, too soon to tell, but obviously if you're the Loonies, you've got that momentum. And I think if you're watching this correctly, you really want to expose the retrievers to the outside. Definitely want to expose them to the outside. However, retrievers ball early on, mistakes seen right from the get from the Loonies. Both teams not looking after that ball in the first half. They'll need to clean that up in order to capitalize on these opportunities. It's the Monte Noble tackled down and outmanned. Big turnover there from the Loonies. Marcus Tupuola with ball in hand, gifts it off to the teammate. And that's Coy there. So the Loonies pick up a big one here. Now an opportunity with 5.54 to go. Shrevers will hold. Noble with it across to Scanlon to the hands of Channel. Zach Bonte, far side. He's taken down quickly by Tupola. And Wendy Young spoke to the coaches at half. Wendy? I did. We'll start with the Retrievers since they've got the ball. Really want to focus on not forcing things. And that focus has to be there for the rest of this match. They had a lot of possession, but didn't put any points up. And then for the Loonies, big pressure on defense as we're seeing them do now. This is Wendling on that far side, number 26, and he'll get himself as close as he can to the post, and he'll tap it down for the try to bring this back within two. Jack Wendling, all power and pace. The right arm fend, he just puts the loony to the ground, coasts in to the try zone, and Dion Crowder, a great defender, but not good enough to stop Jack Wendling. We'll see if the conversion is good. The conversion will not be good, and that rain coming down a little bit despite the sunshine out there. But, Wendy, uh, what did we have from the, uh, from the coach of the Loonies? We'll get it down to Wendy soon enough. Definitely starting to rain out there. Sorry, Don, so somebody was talking to me. We'll make sure Wendy's all squared away. And then we'll get down for the conversation that she was able to have with uh, Coach Matt Wagner. And to me, somebody up. Looney's with it. Far side to the hands of Coy. And it is getting slick out there. Retrievers picking it up. Noble will find himself across and touch it in for try as it's the Retrievers with the momentum now, Abby. DeMonte Noble, he has such quick feet. Absolute pace to burn, but it's the mistake from the Loonies, just too careless with ball in hand. We spoke about that earlier. 
they need to clean that up, but Noble does well. He's in the right position, applying that pressure, filling that lane. He picks it up and coasts down into the try zone, letting the retrievers pull right ahead in this one. 12-7, that conversion good with 3.15 to go. That's 12 straight points for the retrievers, and you really get a look at the rain in that shot there. You can't see it necessarily perfectly, but boy, it is coming down, and the weather will play a factor. These athletes not unused to playing in these conditions, but it changes things. Weather is always an equalizer, especially in the sport of sevens. It's normally such fast pace. You want the game to move as quickly as possible. And this slows things down, takes that athleticism out just a little bit, causing a messy ball. As you can see there, just a knock on creeping in from the kickoff. And Nick, both of these teams already causing a lot of errors, a lot of miscues on their offloads and passes. So this is going to heighten that even more. So it becomes a game of the least amount of mistakes comes away with the win. Absolutely, and having a look there, Bonte gets up, but ball does come forward off his hand, so it will remain with the Loonies, and they have an opportunity to tie this one up if they can get out of their own half. Just can't hold on to it. And another example of the slick conditions. Via Fale manages to hold on, but the ball will be ruled. I believe is he, uh, he ruled a knock on there, I believe. Frustration shown there, slamming the ball down. And because that's delaying the game, the referee goes to the pocket, pulls out the yellow card. So that's the Loonies down to six for the remainder of this match that does not bode well for their chances of coming back to win this one. 135 to go. Frustration apparent. Yellow over here. Where's it? Yellow over here. Now you see they only have six on the pitch. They're opting not to defend the nine. So look at this short side. There's 15 meters of space for the scrum half to use if they choose to do so. They'll reset. Retrievers with it, and it's the eight. CO Jr. on that far side, a turnover and a nice tackle. And the Loonies holding on as best they can, but time becoming a factor. That's the 14 wall. Lot of ground to cover here for the Loonies and the defense of the Retrievers in full effect right now. Santos was tackled, recovered. The Looney's now with 40 seconds to try to get something going. And Dan Norton, if you want anyone on that pitch to have the ball in their hands, it is that man, the all-time leading try scorer on the series. Looney's still have the opportunity, less than 30 seconds to go. It was to McDonald, and now Norton with it back. He's tackled at midfield. Deemed illegal there, Adam Channel, not entering through the gate. So Loonies know they have just one opportunity here. Interesting call, they're opting for the scrum, yet they have a man down. So what is the strategy in that case based on they think they're a better team in the scrum than the Retrievers, and why make a decision like this shy guy? Not the decision I would have made <laughs> if I was on the pitch. It would have been a quick tap and go for me. However, potentially, they're back to their full complement. It looks like Dan Norton spoke to the referee, and they are back to seven, which is interesting. So full strength here, seven v seven. So, you know, I rescind my comment. It, it, it's a good call. Makes more sense now. Time has expired in the second half. One more shot at this for the Loonies. Tupola recovered, and they won't like it, but... Not releasing, calls the referee. Tyanosa knows time is out, but he kicks the ball. It does not go to touch, and it is play on. Scanlon sends it off. You see everyone is up in arms. The disgruntled loonies are in shock, believing they were played without the ball, yet referee says time is up. That is our final score, and this is knockout rugby. Tyanosa thought he had got it into touch, and it was Santos chasing it down, but he just couldn't make it in time. 
It's a 12-7 final. The Retrievers winner in our second batch, stiff-arming the competition and advancing on.